in section two, we talked about transformations of exponential functions. Now, make a little note that this is going to be the very similar notes to Foundations 30. So if you are in pre-calculus 30 and you're taking Foundations 30 next year or next semester, this is going to be the same thing. The only difference is that in Foundations 30, we only really worry about whatever the value is in front of the base. In pre-calculus 30, we're affected by more than just what that A value is. So because we talk about transformations, we talk about the general form for transformations. Y equals A, our function of X subtracting H. Sorry, that's not correct. I definitely need a B value in there. B bracket X minus H. Plus K. Where each of these things deal with a different type of transformation. And that's exactly what this entire page is for. Now, the one thing I want to note that this is our general form. We've done radicals. B x minus h plus k. We've done radicals. I could have done things with polynomials, but I didn't because I found other purposes. Same thing as with a rationals, but I preferred doing that graphing by sign analysis. But we did different things like the absolute values. We did some talk about with the parabolas. Well, we also talked about the exponential. And the way that it looks is it looks like this. That kind of transformation is still in the same kind of general form. Just like with here, our A comes first, then our B, then our H and our K. In the general form, A, B, H, and K, the only difference is that our exponential function, our A is still in front, but our B and our H just goes to the exponent. They still do the exact same thing, and then we just have that plus K. So when I say it does the exact same thing, the A value talks about what kind of vertical stretch factor is happening. If the A value is less than zero, so if it's negative, it reflects over our x-axis. The b value is a horizontal stretch about the y-axis. I'll talk about this in just a second, but if our b value is less than zero, then it's reflecting over the y-axis. Positive x's would become negative x's. Now, just like I've said before, opposite on the inside, same on the outside, the b and h still do the opposite. The only thing is that our opposite on the inside, that inside is in the exponent. But because it still follows the exact same pattern, it's going to be easy enough to look and see exactly what's going to happen. Uh, the description here does the k first. So k deals with vertical translation up and down. Plus 2 means up 2. Minus 3 means down 3. Whereas the h talks about left and right but it's always going to be the opposite on the inside. You can kind of see it here. This is a six to the power of x plus two. Well, that plus two means it's moved left two units. Same thing with this x minus three, it has moved right three. And as with all transformations, stretches and reflections need to be done before translations. The A's and B's have to happen before the H and K's. That's how we Done it since the very beginning. So I'm going to talk about base functions. I'm going to talk about the transform functions. So if we consider the base function y, to, y equals 3 to the power of x, that's the general exponential. That's an exponential function. For each of these transform functions, we're going to state the parameters and describe the corresponding transformation, create a table to show what happens to the given points under each transformation, and sketch the graph, describe the effects that will happen to the domain range, horizontal asymptote, and intercepts. So the first thing is we need to find what are some good points for y equals 3 to the power of x. Well, just like we had done in section 1, 
it's really nice to start with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I can fill in these three without any extra information. 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3, and 3 to the power of 2 is 9. But just like as I had explained in section 1, 3 to the power of negative 1, well, that's flipping our base. So it would be 1 third to the power of 1 being 1 third. To the power of negative 2, means that we still flip our base. The only difference is it's going to be the power of positive 2. So we distribute the 2 on the top numerator and denominator, we get 1 ninth. So basically, these are the points on the base function. It's the, it's the exponential function that has not been changed. But when we do something like this, y equals 2 bracket 3 to the power of x minus 4, some different things happen. For example, the 2 is that a value. It's the number right in front, which means that that is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. This x subtract 4 is in, is in the exponent. And since it's in the exponent, that's talking about what the h value is. But since it's talking about the h value, we're going to do the opposite of x minus 4. It is definitely something that goes right 4. Now, long story short, I should really move this table up before we do anything so I can do things in order. But I'll probably do that in my prep time and figure that out. Anyways, we're going to create a table of values that shows the given points. So we're going to do some mapping notation. What happens to the x's and what happens to the y's? Well, if it removes right 4, it means that all of our x's are going to have 4 added to it. Our y values, by having a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, means that all of our y's are going to be multiplied by 2. Now, what questions are we actually, or sorry, what Coordinates are we going to be transforming? That's these ones. These ones that we had done up here for the base function 3 to the power of x. So absolutely, we have negative 2 to the 1 ninth, negative 1, 1 third, 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2. 9. So those are the coordinates. If we transform them by doing these things, obviously our points change. Negative 2 plus 4, 2. Negative 1 plus 4, 3. 0 plus 4 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. So all of our x coordinates have been changed relatively nicely. And actually, if Apparently, I've also chosen a nice question where multiplying things by 2, multiplying all of these by 2 is going to be relatively easy. Let's do the hard ones first. 2 multiplied by 1 ninth. So just a nice little reminder. 2 multiplied by 1 ninth. 2 is 2 over 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 9 is 9. So it's 2 ninths. Or zero point two 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 two. First, if you have something frilly and you want to really wear a tutu, I'm never going to stop you. It's just as long as it's still school appropriate. Two multiplied by one third is two thirds. Two multiplied by one is two. Two multiplied by three is six. 2 multiplied by 9 is 18. Now, obviously, graphing this is not going to be the easiest. Well, I mean, at this point, 6, 18. Especially looking at what our grid here is not going to go anywhere close to 18. But we can graph the points that we can. 2 and 2 ninths. 
two and two nine. So point two repeated. Oh, that's there. Three and two thirds. Three, two thirds of the way here is about there. Four, two. Four, two. Five, six. Six, oh, 18 would be somewhere way up here. We connect our dots. Just like with all of our other exp exponentials. It's going to have to have some kind of horizontal asymptote. And in this case, it's still our x axis. It's never going to cross that x axis. And there's a key characteristic as to why, which we will talk about right now. So, describe the effects. Well, our domain doesn't change from what the standard is. Just make my Domain D actually look proper. It's still all real numbers. It still extends left, it still extends to the right. None of that has changed. Our range, well, it's still all the y's that are greater than zero. Again, it's not crossing that x-axis, so it's not crossing. Equation of the horizontal asymptote, well, it hasn't changed. And this is actually one really big thing to note. Our horizontal asymptote hasn't changed. Because if you look at it, the only thing that has happened is it's stretched vertically and it's moved to the right for units. So it's kind of double the stretch so it's just going up a little bit faster but moving right for it's not going to affect your range it also does never going to affect your domain but of course we will see something that will change our range and our horizontal asymptote in the next question so our horizontal asymptote if that looks like an arrow just y equals zero intercepts X-intercept? None. Actually, I don't. I don't like my cross that way. There we go. Our Y-intercept? No. Our Y-intercept is happening when X equals zero. So there's actually a nice little fancy way of doing that. Y-intercepts happen when X equals zero. So if I want to find out what that Y-intercept is, I put zero into here. Three to the power of zero subtract four. Well, zero subtract four is negative four. Negative four means we have to flip that base. It's still being multiplied by the two. 1 to the power of 4 is 1. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. So this 1 third to the power of 4 is 181st. Multiply by 2, 3 281sts. Which is much smaller than 2 ninths. And if I could draw graphs nicely, You'd see that, yeah, it's, it would be extremely tiny. This graph definitely doesn't come up like this. It just is nice and smooth and goes up. That's our y-intercept. Now let's do something that's really nice and difficult. Yeah, I can hear the groans from here. I'm even reading it or doing this before I've been teaching the lesson. <laughs> Anyways, uh, see what's happening here. Well, what does a negative one half do? Well, the one half deals with a vertical stretch. Now, 
and in this case, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of one half. With a negative, that negative on the outside, since it's dealing with those y's, it would be reflecting over the x-axis. It might not look the nicest thing here, but that one-fifth is actually in the exponent. It is absolutely in the exponent. And that one-fifth is actually the b value. It's the number that's in front of the x. But at the same time, remember, the b value does the opposite. So instead of looking like one-fifth, it would be a horizontal stretch by a factor. Back door. of five, which is the opposite of one-fifth. Now, I'm saying opposite in quotation marks. Yes, it's technically supposed to be the reciprocal, but it, because it's looking like it's multiplying by x, we divide by one-fifth, but dividing by one-fifth is multiplying by five. So that's how we can get that horizontal stretch by five. And last but not least, that negative five there is our k value. So let's move down five. If we want to sketch it, we're going to use the exact same points as above. So we're going to use these points. So I'm just going to save a little bit of grading. The points are the same as above. Our mapping notation is definitely not going to be the same as our first question, though. There should be, actually in this case, only one thing is going to affect our x. The only thing that is going to affect our x is that horizontal stretch factor. That b value of one fifth means that all of our x's are going to be multiplied by five. Our y's are going to have to be multiplied by a negative one half And then we're going to have to subtract 5 from every single one of those values. Just kind of make a quick little note as before. As with all transformations, stretches and reflections need to be done before translations. This multiplication, this multiplication has to happen before the addition and subtraction. Stretches and reflections happen before translations. The, vertic the horizontal stretch, the vertical stretch, and that reflection will always occur before that translation down five. So now let's have some fun. I'm just going to use these points because they exactly would be exactly was here. Five multiplied by negative two, negative ten. Five multiplied by negative one. Negative 5. 5 multiplied by 0. 0. 5 by 1. 5. 5 by 2. 10. Now, of course, these numbers are going to get a little bit more fancy, so I'll have to do a little bit of side work. Okay. 1 ninth is our y. So negative one half multiplied by one ninth would definitely be negative one eighteenth. But if we subtract five, this is actually a little bit easier than you might think it is. Negative one eighteenth subtracting five would just be negative five and one eighteenth. If you went to the mixed fraction, of course, you'd have negative 91 over 18. If I'm doing my math right. But this gets the point across. You know that's going to be a little bit below negative 5. Negative 1 half multiplied by 1 third would be negative 1 sixth. Once again, subtracting 5 
is that we have negative five and one sixth, which actually would be a little bit lower than negative five. Now, the reason I'm saying a little bit lower is because we're dealing with y's. So obviously, these values are going to have to be are going to be going down. All righty, let's take a look. Uh, one. Negative one half multiplied by one, definitely negative one half. Subtracting five, negative five and a half. Negative one half multiplied by three is negative one and a half. Subtracting five would be negative six and a half. Negative one half multiplied by nine is negative four and a half. Subtracting five. Negative nine and a half. So let's go to sketching this. I think I have this worked out nicely that just so we have everything here, I'm gonna make every single x value worth two. Negative six, negative eight, negative ten, two, four. Six, eight, ten, and I believe I have every single yeah every single y value is worth one. So if I sketch this, negative ten, negative five and one eighteenth, negative ten, negative one two three four five and one eighteenth just would be just below that line, negative five and negative five and one sixth. So negative five would be there. Negative one six would be a little bit lower than that. Zero, negative five and a half. That's what we're dealing with. Five and so five would be there. Five and six, negative six and a half. Let's just set about there. Just gonna make sure I'm counting this right. One, two, three, four, five. Six and a half, good. I'll put a seven, eight, nine. Oh, negative one. Next one would be even further down. So maybe I'll try and add in another line for next year's notes. If we connect our dots, our graph is generally going to look like this. So what are the characteristics? Well, you can see from here, our domain is still going to be all real numbers, still going left and still going to the right. So that's no change. So we're just going to say, let's save some work. That's the same. But our range is definitely affected. Instead of being greater than zero, now we're less than neg less than negative five. And there's two key characteristics that have changed that. A vert vertically stretching by a factor of one and a half, well, let's just saying it's not going to be moving up or down as fast. That reflecting over our x-axis, making it go instead of going up to going down is definitely one thing that's going that has affected our range. At the same time, going down five is also another thing that has affected the range. So our new range, otherwise that are less than negative five. And there we're at. Our horizontal asymptote has also been changed. Why? Because this entire graph has moved down five. Instead of being the x-axis, like most exponentials, a horizontal asymptote will be y equals negative five. Still, no x-intercept. There is none. But our y-intercept can be calculated relatively. 
relatively easily. At the same time, it can actually be directly read. Our y-intercept happens when x equals 0, so it would be negative 5 and a half. So let's just double check that. If we plug 0 into here, 1 fifth times 0 is 0. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. Negative 1 half multiplied by 1 is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half subtracting 5 is negative 5 and a half. So it still checks out if we were to algebraically solve it. All right. Well, that's our stuff there. Let's go and have some last minute fun. Nice little word problem. I gotta just need to move this equation, everything over. Because this is actually something that does have a little bit of application. Again, kind of does deal with a little bit of physics, does talk about your heat. So stuff that you had talked about in physical science 20. A cup of water is heated to 100 degrees Celsius. So it's heated up, and then it's allowed to cool all the way down to room temperature of 20 degrees. Now we're assuming that this room is 20 degrees because of the question. Sometimes, depending on different rooms, obviously, temperature might be 21, 22. If you're in Fahrenheit, you might, might be looking at 71, just somewhere between 71 and 73. I know some people leave their temperature at 70, but that's Fahrenheit. General room temperature is about 20 degrees. The temperature T in Celsius is measured every minute as a function of time, m. And these points are plotted on a coordinate grid. It's found that the temperature of the water decreasing exponentially at a rate of 25% every five minutes. So every single 25 minutes, or sorry, every five minutes, it goes down 25%. Smooth curve is drawn to show as well we have to find out what is the equation for this. So we have to I kind of identify a few of the transformations. The first thing is actually really easily, we know that this has is something that definitely has moved up 20 degrees. Because normally our horizontal asymptote is, x, is the x-axis. So this is a definitely a function that has moved up 20. In other words, the k value would be 20. If we're talking about what our b value is, so how much it actually has been kind of horizontally stretched, it's actually talking about this minutes. Now, it's not really the easiest to determine. I know that I don't really give a lot of work problems like these. This is kind of just a nice little brain exercise. Overall, our B value is affected by this affecting every five minutes. So if it was 20 minutes, well, how many five minute intervals is that? Four. 40 would be eight. 60 would be 12. So on and so forth. Long story short, the B value, however much time has passed, divided by 5 is our B. So our B value is like, is actually one fifth. Well, again, I'm not going to be giving you a whole bunch of word problems. This is, again, just an exercise to help us see different characteristics. One thing that is important to know though is actually finding what that c value is now in the first session when we talk about half life don't write this well actually you could if you really want to with half life our c value was one half because it's talking about how much was left if we're talking about something where it's decreasing at a rate of 25%, so every single five minutes it goes down 
we have to find out what is left. If it's going down 25%, how much is left is 75%. In other words, we can write it as a decimal, and we can see that this number is definitely in between 0 and 1, which makes this graph look legitimate because it's a nice decreasing function with our C value in between 0 and 1. Of course, for my own sake, 0.75 is the same as 3 quarters. So I just like having that because fractions are fun. All right. The last part is actually finding what is that A value. So we have the B value. It's definitely not a function that has moved. This is, that, again, something that you wouldn't actually be able to tell out perfectly is that this is actually not a graph that has moved to the left, or sorry, left or right, has moved up, is actually finding what that A value is. And that is definitely the hard part. Again, one more time, this is a nice brain exercise. Either you can do a brain exercise or you can do sprints outside. Whatever you want. I'll give you the choice, but not actually, because we're in math. Okay, solve for A. Well, what we can do is we can plug some values in to, sorry, actually, I didn't even put this in. Our Y is not Y. Our Y is big T for temperature. We can try and choose some points in here to help us solve for A. But a really nice one to work with is actually this one. When our temperature is 100 degrees, It's still trying to solve for what the A value is. When our temperature is 100, zero time has passed. Since zero time has passed, this makes all of this super simple. Three quarters power of zero over five, well, zero five is one. Sorry. 0, 5 is 0, 3 quarters to the power of 1, eh, 3 quarters to the power of 0 is 1. So this is just 1. 1a. We want to solve for what the a value is. We subtract the 20. And a is 80. So our full equation, if we do y's, so I'm actually going to talk about yeah, I'll, I'll leave it as y. y would be 80, 3 quarter, t or even we could put x if we have our y anyways, over 5, plus 20. Now just to quickly check, if I plug 20 in, 20 over 5 is 4. So. For a check, eighty three quarter twenty over five plus twenty. Just to see if at twenty minutes, if we're close to what fifty five, no forty five. See if we're gonna get a number close to forty five. Now, I don't have a nice calculator on me, so I'm just going to actually do this fully manually. 80, 3 quarters, 20 divided by 5 is 4, so 3 quarters to the power of 4. Plus 20, I apologize if those look like y's, they definitely are supposed to be 4's. Uh, 3 to the power of 4 is 81, 4 to the power of 4 should be 256 multiplied by 80 plus 20 
20. And I can do some of these. 80 by 81 is 6480 divided by 256 plus 20. So that would be 25.3125. Plus 20. Now that works as 45.3125. Perfect. So that definitely matches at 20 minutes. So really quick description of what happens. Just looking at the equation, it's been vertically stretched by a factor of 80. That one-fifth there, so divided by 5, means it's been horizontally stretched by a factor of 5. And the add 20. I think this moved up 20. All right. Have some fun.